Howdy folks. You know what these are? These are mule deer sheds. We used to gather a lot of horns back in the 70s and 80s. There was a boatload of money to be made, especially with the elk sheds. They drop these every March and start growing the new ones. That reminds me of another story. I told you once about the three-legged bear that chewed me up, but I was in the park gathering horns one year and a little 90-pound bear pulled me out of a tree and just chewed the heck out of me. So let's go sit down and I'll tell you that story. So we were gathering horns one day in the, the yard, we called it. That's how we referred to the park. And in there with a buddy named Todd. And we'd go in there with backpacks and we'd pick up as many antlers as we could till we had a big load. And then we'd go stash them in the tree somewhere. We'd do that for three or four trips until we had enough to make up enough loads to warrant taking in a pack string. And sometimes we'd bring four or five loads out on mules and a lot of horns. So. We're in there one day and here's this little black bear and he's he's acting funny. He's kind of sniffing at us, making a little false charges 30, 40 yards away. And we weren't too concerned about it. Hell, he wasn't any bigger than an Australian Shepherd, but he was just skinning bones. And his mother had run him off as a two-year-old, I'm sure, when she got, had new cubs. And he was starving. He made it through the winter, but boy, he was just skinning bones. And finally, he come right up to us and he's popping his teeth and snapping like he's biting us. And, we didn't have any guns or anything. Well, I didn't think we had any guns at that time. So we dropped our packs and we both shinnied up a tree next door to each other. No, no bigger than this, just full of broken branches. That bear, we thought he'd sniff and play with them backpacks with all the horns. And I no sooner got 15, 20 feet up in that tree and here he come. And they go up a tree as fast as they run on the level. And he come up that tree and he's biting and chewing at me and I'm kicking with my feet and screaming. And finally he just grabbed a hold of my the whole side of my foot in his mouth and he just let go of the tree and down we come. And I got as tore up by those tree branches as I did by him biting me. And I landed on top of him when we hit the ground and I could just hear the wind go out of him, just whoosh. And like I said, he's no, no bigger than this and I'm no small guy. I've weighed 220, 230 my whole life. And Well, I get up and start take off running and he just reached out and gave me a little bear hug around the ankles and took me to the ground and he got right on top of me. And, I just had time to get my forearm up. Boy, he went just savage in my arm. And at some point, he hit a nerve and it felt like I got hit by a thousand volts of electricity and my arm just went numb. And he goes to shaking me and like I said, I'm, I'm no little guy. That bear was throwing me around like a rag doll. And I'm screaming and you know, what do you do? It all just happens so dang fast. And Todd's up there in the tree yelling and Finally, he's, he's hollering, play dead, play dead, which is a pretty tough thing when you got your whole forearm in a bear's mouth. And he'd bit plumb through. He hit the bone on both sides and got that nerve. And so I kind of played dead. And Todd's up in his tree still <laughs> yelling at him. And that little bear just left me alone. And he ran right up that tree. And turns out Todd had carried a gun in the park that day. And it was just a little 38. It wasn't enough for a bear anyway. And, he gave it two warning shots and it's coming up that tree at 30 miles an hour and then he finally takes that gun and put it right between his eyes just as he got to his feet and click. He only had three rounds in that gun anyway, you know, and so that bear got a hold of him and pulled him down out of the tree and the tree he was in had all these broken branches about that long and just savage poor old Todd coming out of that tree. I mean, he was tore up everywhere. The bear got him by a hind leg and he's shaking him around and I get up and grab a big old six-point antler out of my backpack and I'm swinging at him, but I keep missing. I don't want to go like this. I'm afraid I'll hit Todd and drive a tine through his body. So <laughs> finally, you know, I got to do something. I turned that horn around and just smacked that bear as hard as I could across the spine. and He finally run off. So. so here we are. We're in the park where we're not supposed to be. We got a big old load of antlers and we're both tore up and bleeding like a stuck pig. So. We hide our horns and we haul butt to get out of the park and go down to Livingston, Montana to get sewed up. And of course, the doctor's wondering what happened and we lied. We told him we got chewed up by a big dog and he knew better, but I don't think he ever called the fishing game. So anyhow, that little bear got trapped two nights later in a campground in the park and they killed him. He was a problem bear. And that's how I know he weighed 90 pounds because fishing game weighed him or the park service, whoever caught him. And, and he was starving to death. So he wasn't protecting a carcass and he wasn't protecting cubs. It was a male bear. He was just starving and he was coming to eat us. 
Well, that little 90-pound bear story was a pretty good story. He was 90 pounds of dynamite. But I got stories, 50 years of handling buffalo, 14 mountain goat hunts, every one of them was a train wreck, drugged by horses, bunch of stories. So you hit that subscribe button and come on back and hear, hear some more of this Rocky Mountain Adventures.